obviously I know that I know the question's mad broad. I know obviously when you're looking at the whole you know, the whole lifespan of religion itself, I know there's gonna be many people with different views and I would like to have people on here that have those kind of views. But at the same time we have to look at the results. And as we all know already, black people love church. I mean, not even church, I mean the mosque, all religions, I think we love actually to worship and be in a religious kind of, I don't know, what do you guys think? We like to actually really, really, you know, uh, uh, um, put our energy into the unseen, you know, the supernatural. And that's because we're cultural people, you know, we're spiritual people as well. And also because a lot of the religious systems, as we know already, have stolen a lot of our cultural systems, remixed it, and they've made what they've made. So, mm. but the main question is this, no matter what it's done and what it has done, let's start, I think we should start with the positives first, so we can then go into the negatives later, because I kind of think we already know the negatives, but we're going to explain for those that are listening, mm. and obviously those that are watching as well. So, One of the things I think is, I do think black people do like to be in, I think black people like the idea of community. I think we're used to having big families or big friendship groups being communal and I think that comes natural to a lot of black people um that's a very broad statement because it might not be everyone but I think most of the black people I've encountered are used to those settings and mm. we go towards anything that builds a community and a kind of hub of safety and I think churches provide that that's true that's true I mean <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let Mo speak and I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll uh... no, no. For me, I'll be I'll be real. I personally think that um, there's nothing that religion has provided that we probably wouldn't have done ourselves anyway. Mm. And I think it's 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 easy to comment on so many things like I don't know, let's say communal things, mm. this that, and I just feel in any if you look back at any African culture, or whatever, or this that, even proverbs and stuff, they talk about village community. Mm. Mm all those sort of That's things true, yeah. mm. so I, I i just feel like it hasn't really added to something that mm. we, we would have been doing already ourselves or anything so mm. when when you mention like the positives I, I i can't think of an isolated positive that mm. we would have experienced if it was not for this religion or mm. this yeah thing. i see i see, <laughs> <laughs> I see what it means still because mm. for me it's like I look at religion as, like you said, you know, community and also, again, you know, it, there is that dependency from, from a lot of black people. I feel with, I mean, and I'm quoting um, Professor or I think Dr. Philippe Matthew or whatever his name is. He does a, he's a YouTuber, historian as well. He's got a thing called the Philippe Matthew Show on YouTube. And he, he basically said, wrote down religion in one small sentence, which I really, it really resonated with me. And he basically just said, rah, like, Religion is a trauma response. Mm. You know, when you've got um, black people, especially, you know, you've got like nine or six different personalities you're going to have to run through throughout your day. So it mm. could be at your job. You know, you're playing the whole, you know, hi, how you doing? Like putting on a voice and whatever. You go home. You may be a single mum. You say, oh, a single father. And you got to put on that face for your children or, you know, the ones there, like that personality of you not affecting certain things. And then... It could also just be you going into, I don't know, a friend's house or somewhere else. You're consistently, you know, judged and you're consistently going through things. And that's one aspect. That's not talking about those that actually go through other forms of trauma and whatnot. If there's a place you can go to, speak your mind. I won't say not get judged because you get heavily judged in certain places. But you're allowed to speak it and have hope to feel like there could be something better on the other end. That's what... I believe religion religion does. So a church, for example, like 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 Vicky was saying with community. I remember growing up, there was that aspect of community, you know, it was that aspect of, you know, cell groups. You had um, prayer meetings, you know, everybody was an auntie. I know that's just probably in the African tradition, but I, I mean when I grew up I was like, bro, mum like you have you're not really blood related aunties, are they? She's like, Well, no, they're not, but they're aunties because you have to show respect. Is that is that a cultural thing though? That, yeah. that as that, opposed that, to a religious thing. That is a cultural thing, but for me, it was introduced via religious state, and this is where I get kind of because obviously I know we're going to do all the positives here, so mm. we'll get to the negatives in a minute. But from that, I think the positivity from that actual trauma response, as Philippe Matthew would say, 
is there's a way to keep going. There's a way for people to keep, you know, hoping and whatnot. And I feel even when you look at leaders like Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Farrah Khan, um, a lot of them were coming from religious in- institutes that actually built them into the way they were into where they were mm-hmm. already. Malcolm X can be arguable because obviously his dad was a Garveyite, but we can get into that later. But I feel like the positives from that, it does breathe, it does breathe obviously a lot of um, aspects of community, aspects of hope as well. And I think the good thing is, is that there is that point where everyone can actually come together. Like in Ghana, for example, I remember going to, um, to Ghana, like, well, obviously I go quite regularly, but this is like a trip I went to in 2008. And I remember trying to speak to some of like the locals there about the politics and whatnot because man's driving up my uncle's road and the road is just mashed up. Like, it's been mashed up for years. You know, no one's there. And one of the police officers telling me that, oh, basically, he won't... So he's basically saying to me that the government needs to come and do it or the, or the local... I said, why can't you lot do it? You lot all have taxis or, you know, businesses and whatnot. Why can't you lot come together and do it? And then one of the police was like, oh, well, he over there supports you know, NDC, that one supports MVP, and this one over here. I'm like, Ross, so like, you need to tell me that you lot are all in the same business. You lot all own taxis. You've all got shops. Mm. But you won't come together. And you know what i Put your money together. But on Sunday, on Sunday, there's no obligation. You man are in church. Your wives are in church. Mm. You lot have cooked jollof fries. You lot have cooked banku soup without even question. So how can you get together on a Sunday but you can't get together for the real realistic problems on a normal day. And this is where we get into the whole aspect of the negative side, which is, this is no action. Like, there's this... Before, though, you go too deep Okay, cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the things things you mentioned, which Mm. is hope, and I think that is what it gave a lot of people. So when you hear about things like, let's say, the um, slave trade in America, Mm. what they had was hope that there would be better days. When Mm. you look at the destruction of Africa for those who like were in the graft of that moment it's like the idea of it gave that hope so it gave a source of where people could be like okay we're gonna come together Mm. and we believe there'll be better days and I think it does that for people in the privacy of their own homes as well I don't think it has to be just on Sunday I think when people are going through it the idea of having hope and I think people can more easily and, and I'm saying this from the stance point that I believe God is within every single person so I don't look at God as an external source but I think for many people he is an external source and Mm. they find it easier to believe in something outside of themselves than they do to believe that they have any bit of God in them you know they they might believe they believe in God but in terms of believing that God is a part of them which is why people went crazy when Kanye West said I am a God why can you not say that when we're made in God's image what does that what does that mean (laughs) (laughs) you know so yeah yeah. but I would say so on the positives Mm. I think that is something it did give and you know what as well on the positives just to add to that before we get into negatives i feel like with the positives there is an aspect of structure and discipline and certain regulations that i believe that a lot of people would, you know would benefit from following so for example like they can join the military they can join the military even with a military standpoint i know a lot of muslim um, brothers that i've grown up with you know, beforehand they weren't Muslim, but when they went to prison, they realised how much of a community that Islam provides in prison. And obviously they realised how much of a... I mean, when you're in prison, obviously you're going to have to conform regardless. So if you're out there on road and you're doing what you're doing, when you go to jail, there's no choice. You're going to have to mm. conform. So it's the perfect place to push a narrative of 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 peace and love, you know, um, a narrative of brotherhood as well. Everyone gets different names. You know, I remember my, my bro was even saying to me, he's like, bro, it's like mad because when it comes to like the whole, um, when everyone's getting their, that, their delivery and their posts and their, and their food and whatnot, everyone, they're all just getting their one together. And mm. if you're not in that group, you're going to sit back and think, bro, like, who yeah. are they? And that, like, what are they? So you automatically want to get involved in that whole mm-hmm. kind of, you know, thing. But it's like a feeling of loneliness in it if you're, if you're outside. Yeah. And I think, again, looking at how, speaking specifically on black people and you know we spoke about black the black family Mm. a few weeks ago like looking at how that was kind of taken apart Mm. i think religion has given people that thing to go to where it's like this is my it creates a family for some people Mm. you know 100 100 now 
<laughs> I'm just thinking, is there any other positives though? Yeah, I, I don't, you don't, because the negatives, man, can go hard, but I, I do want to shine. See, good I question that. on any, there being any other positives simply because I feel as though religion as being spiritual and your relationship with God, they're not the same thing. Mm. So I feel like spirituality and your relationship with God, to me, they're like two in one, right? Mm. Yeah. But I feel like religion is a very separate matter. That's when we're dealing with how man chooses to show appreciation for their God, how they choose to then live their lives. Mm. And I feel like for some people, it does create, I guess, routine. Yeah. It creates a structure that they can go by. It creates, I don't know, it gives some people, I, I guess it gives people boundaries. Mm. But that's not to say those are all good things dependent on the person it's, that you're dealing with. No, what mm. you're saying is true. It's, it's also right. Um, you're also right on the terms of it's also good for rehabilitating people. So, you know, mm. you get a lot of... Um, I remember watching um, When They See Us on Netflix and um, the part where the guy sees the actual guy that raped the woman mm. and he's like, look, I've turned my life around. I'm a Christian now. So I'm going to tell the court, the judge, I'm going to tell everyone that it was me who really raped that woman. I've seen you in here. We like, you know, and prior to that, they, when they first encountered, they had a fight. Yeah. Then I think six, seven years later, the guy was like, you're still here. But you didn't even do anything. So I think that made the guy feel so guilty. Yeah. But he had already found Christ at the time. So he was just like, you know what? Like, this, is, this is a true story. He's like, you know what? I'm going to give my life to Christ. I'm sorry. Just because I give my life to Christ and I'm a Christian, I'm going to free your life because you're in here and you're innocent. Mm. And, um, and yeah, that helped my man. So I feel like that's that that could be a very good positive in terms of the mindset of people at stage one. But yeah, because because I must say I mm. I commend the good nature and faith that my mum has. Mm. So she's a Christian. She's like church warden. Um, I I commend the, the the faith and the good nature that she has, and I think it would be ignorant of of me to not attribute any of how she is mm. due to what Christianity has done for her in her life mm. for her to be where she is now mm. and so that's that's the kind of positive that I see in it is that it does bring about a sort of genuine beauty in certain people mm. um, and I feel with some people they needed that faith in order to bring out that side of them or continue that side of them mm. so I, I i definitely think that is a massive positive attribute of religion in that sense yeah, that's good now you spoke about your mum and the faith i feel like you know vice versa with my mum as well now moving on to the negatives this is now where i start to you know you know as the question says how has it served us as as black people now, we know the positives now. Stemming from that, where has the actual trauma response worked? So, for example, if I'm going through therapy and I'm going through a traumatic experience and I'm, I'm, I'm really finding it hard to, you know, get through things, there's a point where, obviously, my therapist might say, okay, cool, we've got to just reschedule everything or remap everything and go for a different approach. So, until... Unless you get a good therapist, until... I've got to a certain point. I'm not really going to stop until I've actually got to a point of actually, you know, being better than what I was in it. Mm. I feel with the religion part now, it's, it's peak because there's no follow-up. I feel like whenever we have issues, we want to march and pray, but we don't want to physically put in efforts and works or plans in place to actually fix the problem. So, for example, it could be gentrification. We spoke about this before in our mm. previous podcast. Gentrification is a good thing if you have invested in your community. So I always use Southall as an example because Southall is a place that I saw where they were practicing those so sort of um, um, standards. And I have not seen Southall being gentrified where the Indians are having to move out or get shipped out or whatnot because a lot of them own their properties there. They own shops there. A lot of them are in the police force, the NHS there. So when gentrification comes along, sorry, if you own your property now, boom, it boosts up your your, your value. Yeah. At the same time, you've also got new, now a new opportunity because whoever they're trying to advertise to or whoever new residents are coming in, they're now going to have a new taste of your culture. So for example, 
a lot of my friends from up north moved back to Elephant. Sorry, moved into Elephant. Places like Barra, places like Peckham, you know, Brixton, and they've never been to London before. So when they've gone there now, it's like, oh, right, there's like a jerk chicken shop here, or there's an African shop here, or there's an Indian shop here, and they they just indulge in it. Now you've got this whole takeaway culture, like delivery and Uber Eats and whatnot. So if you was a man that owned your own curry house for 20 years now, mm. and he gentrified Elephant and Castle, and, you know, you'd bought your flat on the Haygate estate, for example, or whatever, you're, you're laughing. But again, I feel like with the religious side now, it doesn't promote that self, that do for self kind of action. You know, you mentioned about Kanye calling himself a God and people are getting angry. But then if you look at the, the Bible, for example, aren't we supposed to be made in God's image? Like she said, are we supposed to follow the rules of God and, you know, practice? I know, but the Bible, <laughs> all right, I'll say this with the Bible, it literally is a I, I can go on <laughs> so many different things. No, my, go, go truth. Go my truth. thing is, uh, let, me, let me touch on this first. My main problem in terms of with religion, so when I say religion, I'm including Islam, Judaism, all, all, all of the religions, is more how it can be so easily manipulated and used. Mm. And I think for such a divine kind of religion faith based thing how is it so easily misused in 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 so many ways um and and why does it allow to continue for it to be such a good thing mm, mm. and 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 i feel that's my biggest problem with it is that especially the bible anyway in particular is that the bible can literally support any type of action in that one book the Old Testament and the New Testament. Mm. You can justify almost anything that's happened throughout history with the Bible. <laughs> mm. yeah. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. It, and, it, and a lot of it is all interpretation. Mm. Mm. Um, and then there's so many different versions of the Bible. All of them is because one king wanted to do this. So he's thought, all right, fine, let me scrap this version so I can divorce this person or James. do this, yeah. do that. And it's, it's just manipulated over and over and over the years, over the years. Mm. And I just feel for people to hold such high standards for such a fragile book, I believe, mm. personally, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is, is just so misleading. Like you're, you're, you're already going in the wrong direction without knowing. That's, that's this is where I feel like there's a difference between <laughs> <laughs> but like there's a difference between the Bible and religion. And yeah. I think the two are definitely very closely tied together, which is why it is relevant to talk about it in speaking about religion, because that's what this relig like let's say Catholics or Christian Christianity is based off. Mm. So I think <laughs> my issue is a lot of Christians do not study their Bible, and I can say that boldly because I read mine. And I've read it. So it's oh, like, yeah. I feel like a lot of Christians don't really 110%, mate. Mm. study their Bible. Like they don't really study it. So th to me, the Bible talks, there's, it is open to interpretation. But that's a modern thing though. Yeah. Because back in the day, they were all actually really used to read the Bible. Yeah. yeah. But this is it's the thing. Over time they don't. And this is where, where I feel like some of the that. issues lay in because people will do things like copy quotes that they see somebody else post and they'll just copy and paste it on Instagram or they'll be like, oh, this one's really stuck with me and they'll hold on to it and they'll tell everyone about it. So it can seem like people know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the Bible really does, it does promote a lot of self-work and I feel like that's why it is open to the interpretation of the reader and it's clear that that's what it is. And I've been the church I, I I used to go to. They do say that they would say to us, "It is open to your interpretation." So you can come here and hear me talk about mine, but it is mm. for you to take away and think about how mm. you know it feeds to you and what it reads to you, what it says to you. Mm. So, in saying that, I think that's where the first issue lays. Is a lot of people do not study it for themselves. Mm. So I think that's one thing, um, and it, with what you're saying, it, it justifies a lot of things. It does, and I think one of the mm things it does say that is stuck out to me and I think this is if you're being honest when you're reading it and taking it in is that it says you're truly sinning when you go against what your heart tells you now I've met Christians that will combat me against saying that and they'll be like that's wrong you because it's like going with your feelings <laughs> and I'm like okay well I've read it and it's, this is what it says it says you, the truth the only true sin you commit is against what your heart tells you so if you're going to do something and for example, in, you, in deep down, you're like, no, no, this feels wrong. And you go ahead and you do it anyway. And this is something that's going to potentially harm somebody. Then you're doing wrong. 
Now, obviously, when you insert the fact that there are some people in the world who feel like they could justify that, I genuinely felt it was the right thing to kill these people, and that's why I went and did it. So I do understand your point there. It's definitely valid. Um, but I think it's manipulated by people who are in power. I feel like the people that... A lot of people that are, that are in religious areas and like in terms of that's their work that's their that's what they do day to day i feel like i've come across a lot of people that are on power trips as well Mm. and i think that's where the abuse of it has come into form and shape but i also feel like it's been allowed to happen because everybody else is just blindlessly following and yes the bible says have blind faith in god it does not tell you to have blind faith in the people in your church and what they're telling you (laughs) and Mm. i feel like that's where some of the issues lie and a lot of the people that go to churches and like you know i keep saying churches people that are in religions are vulnerable you know they go to somewhere to feel safe because they're you know they go there for healing or because Mm. they feel broken and that's where they're supposed to get uplifting from so you're dealing with a wide spectrum of people that are vulnerable and you have people who like in other positions of power in the workplace whether it be in like politics people do take advantage of their positions so you know funny you say that because obviously i listened to the other podcast with Umar Johnson and Nick Cannon. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah and he yeah, talks yeah. about the um the yeah. pimp pastors basically. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, yeah, but yeah. but the a thing that I like that he highlighted is that you also get a group of people that would prefer to be manipulated and abused because it's mm. easier mm. than mm. to actually yeah. actually do work do or work, yeah. go out yeah. and whatever. Mm. Like this mm. is an easier option. Mm. I just mm. come church on a Sunday, give my offering, my tithe, you know, mm. and then that's it. I don't really have to do nothing else. Yeah. Prayed still carry on i can go back on sunday hope they forgive me <laughs> still do do you, <laughs> do you get what i mean like yeah, so yeah, yeah. No, I, I i get what you mean about people manipulating but then there is also the onus aspect in terms of i feel a lot do actually prefer being manipulated I, I, and this is the thing what you mm. see what, you, what you're saying is true and then I, I agree with what you're saying as well vicky because it's like now looking at the situation from what you're saying you have to ask yourself who was the or why did this whole religious institute or why did religion start now i think people need to understand that religion isn't a way of life culture is a way of life Mm. religion was a it's it's a weapon you know it's a weapon Mm. that was constructed by our men that felt and I'm, i'm highlighting men because obviously it's you know it was a very very heavy misogynic you know movement that wanted to just dominate and control people of their land. You know, when they came to Africa, you have to remember, yeah, I, I know I always get into history, but I need to give, you know, people understand. I feel like when you're looking at religion in its stronghold, we're looking at anything after, you know, the late 1600s, you know, after 1400s, you know, after the Moors, um, the, I can't remember the general's name, um, the general that lost the Battle of Gibraltar, but after he was defeated, the last Moorish king or general, mm. You've already got Europe, who has obviously been ruled by the Moors for about 800 years. So now they've seen what Africans are capable of. They've seen, you know, we've you know, paved roads, alchemy, mm. you know, science. We've got clean water, the, the whole bathing system. I know it sounds mad, but, you know, do your research. You can look it up. But their eyes now, you've got King, you've got uh, Queen Isabel and um, King Ferdinand you know, of, 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 of Portugal, Spain, or at the Iberian, Pennsylvania. And they basically got their eyes on Africa. So a lot of these people now are traveling to Africa. They're coming back. They're saying, rah, I went to Mali, and they're talking about this guy called Mansa Musa, which is basically means king, but I can't remember his full name. And, you know, this guy's had, like, the most gold. He's bankrupt. You know, like, he went around the world, mm. literally giving out gold, and he bankrupted a lot of countries. It took like twenty years for them to actually get their economy back into 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 um, an actual state. But mm. the reason why I went back to the Moors is because when they came to Africa, they had already had referencing and studies on us and how we move and whatnot, and they knew that our one of our main power sources was our spirituality. So if they can construct something and turn around, which they've already started doing, you know, in the uh, Council of Nicaea with uh, with um, uh, what's his name again. Uh, What's his name again? Oh, I don't know. I've got Leonidas. Not Leonidas. Um, John Constantine. That was yeah. it, yeah. Basically, they had learned that in order to... And even with him, he would say, you know, if you read some of the literature, he would say, Ra, we're trying to control a lot of the rebel groups. The rebel groups to them were the Hebrews, um, some so-called, I mean, 
at the time they weren't Christian, but basically they were like Coptics because mm. obviously the, the Christian religion, actual Christ and what a lot of the stuff is come, comes from um, a Coptic belief system back in ancient Kemet and Ethiopia, isn't it? So anyway, he was trying to, it's, he was just basically trying to find a way to control them. So he started to compose all of their cultural systems into a book. And then through years and years, the Flavians started to use it in Rome to, you know, um, bring in this whole aspect of Christ and a Trinity, which is basically, as we know already, from the story of Haru and Isis or, 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 or Set and Asar. But anyway, the point is this, it was made for control. Now, when we go and we look into the actual, we fast forward to today, you can see the same aspect has still hit people. Like you said, people want to go Sunday. Oh, well, I prayed for um, the officer of George Floyd to, um, sorry, the guy that killed George Floyd, the officer that killed him, for him to go to jail. Okay, cool. Well, I prayed for his family. Okay, cool. How have you physically helped the situation in real life? Mm-hmm. Like, cool, you can't go and put my man in jail. But then you can look at it and think, why was George Floyd unprotected? Or why was... Brianna Taylor, because a lot of people love to pump this George Floyd narrative where Brianna Taylor died, I think, before him, innit? Yeah. And she hasn't got no justice for none of her killers. Mm-hmm.